And when you first open up ZBrush, you're going to be presented with this box. It's called the light box. And this button right here lets you turn it off and on. And most of the time, you will start with one of these templates. Now, I don't recommend or would want you to, to start with any of these kind of more fleshed out ones. Where we'll start will be right here. This is called the Dynamosphere 32. We also have 128 and 64. This refers to the resolution of the sphere. Uh, and we don't want to start with something that's 128 because the resolution is too high. Uh, it's always best to start with the lowest possible amount of geometry because the first thing you will do is build up primary forms, then secondary forms, then tertiary forms. And when you get to tertiary forms, you want to be in as high of resolution as you can. But when you're first kind of blocking out your character or your creature or whatever you're doing, uh, you want to start low. So most of the time, almost everybody starts with a sphere. You can start with a box or other things, but this one is already set up for you. Um, so again, you can click this light box to turn it on and off. You can also click the hide button up here. But we'll just double click on Dynamesphere 32. And it says it, the project has been changed because it's its own project. And we'll talk about that in another video. We'll say no. Okay, so we're starting off with the sphere. Now, this video is just going to be on navigation and a little bit of UI. So first thing is just the left mouse click will let you rotate around. You want to make sure you're outside in the canvas here, because if you're over it and you click, you're going to end up sculpting on the sphere. So we just want to move around, left click. You can also right click. Now to pan, you hold Alt and left click, or Alt and right click. That will let you pan around. So again, left click, Alt and left click. Now the zoom is a little difficult. So you have to hold the Alt and the left click like you're panning, but then while keeping your finger on the left click mouse button, let go of the Alt and that will allow you to zoom in and out. It seems awkward at first, but it, it's actually a good way to get around because you're only focusing on one one button. So you can like pan and zoom really quickly. So again, rotate is just left click or right click. Alt and left click or right click is to pan. And the last is hold Alt and left click like you're panning but then let go of the Alt button and it will put it into a, a zoom. You can also use these buttons on the side here. So we have Move, just click. We have Zoom, and then we have Rotate. So it does the same things, but hotkeys are just faster instead of constantly coming over to the, to the right side of the screen. So, and really it's only one button you have to deal with. So get used to that. So the last thing I'll talk about is part of the UI, and it's pretty important. So what you'll find up here is what we're going to focus on for the rest of this tutorial. These five buttons. So we have Edit, Draw, Move, Scale, and Rotate. They have hotkeys to them, and as you hover over, you can see W, E, and R for Move, Scale, and Rotate. This hotkey is Q for Draw, and this hotkey is T to Edit. Now, first we'll talk about the edit. Right now, you are in an edit mode for this model. If you unclick this or hit the T key, you will see this is unhighlighted and you are now not in edit mode, which means you cannot sculpt on the model and it is not a 3D model anymore. And you can see the cursor changed from when I hit T you can see now this is in a perspective viewport. You can see the red cursor. If I hit T, that goes away. So now if I try to move inside the, the canvas, I'm basically just drawing 
new shapes. Now these are basically stamped to the canvas. If I hit T again, only the last thing that I drew on the canvas is live. Everything else is here. Something that people do a lot is they end up getting into this position and, and saying that well, these things won't move, I can't get them off my screen. So the hotkey for that, and you should remember this, is Control N will clear the canvas. The F button will frame it so it'll get closer. And one more thing about navigation. As I'm rotating, if I want to get to the exact front, back, and side of the model, as I rotate, if I hold in the Shift key, it will snap. It will snap to the nearest uh, axis. So if you want to do a direct sculpt on directly on top, and this is kind of eyeballing it, but if you want like the direct top, just hold Shift and you'll snap. If you want to go to the left, start to go left and then hold Shift. If you want to go to the right, hold Shift and it will snap it. If you just hold it the whole time, you will just snap to uh, each axis. So I forgot to mention that. So back to edit. Sometimes you accidentally hit the edit key while you're sculpting and you're off. So that's, that's a problem. Control N will get rid of the stuff. If you did that and it's gone, you can just try it back on again and hit the T key or edit and then you're back in into your kind of sculpting mode. Draw is basically sculpt, being able to sculpt. When you go to these next ones, move, scale, and rotate, draw will become unselected because you're going to be in a different mode. So clicking on move, you'll see that draw is deselected and now you're not going to sculpt anymore, you're going to move. And this will let you not move the camera, but move the object. So if I do this, I'm moving it. This is like the gizmo in 3D Studio Max. You can control the axis. Now this is a a gizmo that controls everything, so you can rotate, scale, and move in the same widget. This is more important when we go with the other way to move, scale, and rotate a model. This is actually new to 2018, ZBrush 2018. It used to be called transpose and we still use that. So if I go back to move and this button right here is gizmo 3D. If I turn this off we are now in a transpose mode which is basically like you draw out if I click in the middle and just drag out like this creating this line and if we're in move and I get into the middle of these orange circles I can move the model. This is the way it used to be but this is still actually very important but you'll see each major orange ring does a different function. This will help you kind of squish it in. This one will actually cut. These buttons here will pop them into different axis. So we still use this while we sculpt uh, and resize. But to move the main parts as a whole, you want to be in the gizmo mode take advantage of it because it feels more like 3D Studio Max and it, it works the same way. Transpose works great with masking and it works great with posing uh, models and things like that. You almost use these as bones and we'll do that later. Uh, so there's definitely still a use for this. But just moving the model and your parts around using the gizmo is the, the, the important part. Now you'll see in the gizmo you have these buttons here. The one that we focus on is this one. It pops it to the middle. And this one moves the mesh itself. 
and this one resets the match orientation based off of the gizmo. So if our gizmo was like this, if our mesh was tilted like this, it will move it. And this one locks and unlocks. So if you unlock it, you can move the gizmo without affecting the mesh. If I lock it again, now it affects it. We could put this back to the center. We can go to the axis, which is the world axis. So again, we'll put the gizmo back at the middle of the model. But now we want to get the model back to the center. We can move mesh to the axis. Now the hot key for the lock is Alt. So you see if I press the Alt key, it turns it on and off. But you have to hold it in. So if I hold it and do this, I'm moving just that. If I let go of the Alt, it locks it back. So it's a nice quick way to use it. If you need to go back to sculpting again after you've moved stuff around, now you moved it over here for some reason, you have to hit the draw button or the Q hotkey, and then you can sculpt. If you need to put it back to the middle, just do the same thing again. You have to go into any one of these modes, and since it's already centered to the model, you can just do the axis button, the little house here. The hotkey P, when I press it, you'll see this button over here. It says dynamic perspective. All it does is put you in an orthographic view and a perspective view. This is great if you really need to paint something or sculpt something straight on the model without having perspective kind of mess with it. So those are the last things I'll talk about in this video, and we'll go over some different stuff in the next video.